welcome back to my channel. I just returned from the Mushroom Kingdom and I brought back a friend. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Oh my gosh, guys, I can't believe it. It actually worked. Today, I'm actually gonna show you all how I created my very first 3D tumbler. Thanks for helping me with the intro. You're welcome. I was so excited to create my first 3D tumbler. I've never made a cup like this before, but as you can see, I was super inspired by the brand new Super Mario Bros. movie. We loved it so much, and when I saw this 3D sphere, she just from, had to do it. Yeah, from Dimensional Drinks, it just popped in my mind. I was like, you know what? I think I could make a little Mario mushroom or a toad out of it and I'm just so happy with how it turned out and I can't wait to show you guys my process. Before we get started with today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the company that created this really innovative, amazing product for people like me who've never done 3D tumblers before. So I want to say a huge shout out to Christina and Melanie from the Dimensional Drinks crew for creating these really awesome tumbler sleeves because this is something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time and I never really had the courage to sculpt my own 3D tumbler until now. Being able to have access to the base that easily fits around these tumblers really helped encourage me to create my first 3D product and it is just so amazing to have so many bright minds in the creative community come up with really cool innovative products for us crafters to use. I know there are so many amazing 3D artists out there that make amazing 3D cups straight from clay and I, I just give so much props to you guys out there that are able to sculpt amazing tumblers. So I want to just give credit to the entire 3D tumbler community because without of that inspiration, my first 3D tumbler wouldn't have been possible. I want to leave some details down below in the description. Everything that you see in this video will be listed and linked down below so you guys can check it out. If you have been wanting to create your own 3D tumblers and just didn't know where to start, definitely check out Dimensional Drinks because they have some amazing cool 3D products that you guys can use that make 3D making super easy and simple. So this is going to be just a me making my very first 3D tumbler. You can take any tips or tricks that I may be giving you guys in the video to use and hopefully help you on your journey. But if you guys want uh, instructions or you want to gain access to 3D artists, I'm going to list a few in the description down below. I will have a link to the Dimensionals uh, Drinks Facebook group so you guys can join and see all of the amazing stuff that they create. Again, I just wanted to let y'all know this is my very first 3D tumbler, so I'm sure it's gonna be far from perfect, but I'm pretty proud with how it turned out. And hopefully this video inspires you in some way, shape or form to create your very first 3D tumbler as well. So if you're interested in seeing how I created this, then keep on watching. Okay, so here we have the 3D printed tumbler sleeve. I actually purchased the set that also includes the tumbler. So the tumbler size is a 12 ounce whiskey barrel and that is the tumbler that fits specifically inside this sleeve. If I'm not mistaken, I believe all of the 3D tumbler sleeves are made specifically to fit the Steel Magnolia brand of tumblers. However, I think they may be able to fit other brands as well. I decided to keep it safe and just purchase the set because as you can see, it fits perfectly inside and I didn't want to have to guess or try to find a tumbler that would fit since they had one that fit it perfectly anyway. I wasn't sure if I was going to be using air dry clay or oven baked clay and and I ultimately ended up going with the air dry clay because I just wasn't confident enough to go in with the oven 
dry clay i'm in baked clay <laughs> so here i am i'm using the das brands i've had this clay for a while and i purchased it on amazon i'm taking a piece of that clay and i'm just warming it up in my hands and rolling it out with these sculpting tools that i purchased from michael's and i'm just trying to figure out how i'm gonna lay this on my sphere i ended up going in and cutting up my um, clay into rectangular pieces um, because i knew i wanted to wrap my sphere um, so that the mushroom cap would be on the top portion of the sphere and the face of the mushroom on the bottom so i'm just lining up at, because this sphere is already has the base for you you're using a lot less clay than you normally would have to if you were sculpting a tumbler completely from scratch so these spheres the, this sphere and these 3d printed tumbler sleeves just make it a lot easier because you already have the base build up for you and it is a lightweight base so i didn't need to add much clay at all i just took a little bit of clay um, just so i can line that sphere and i'm going to just kind of push it all around i'm smoothing it out with my fingers i'm just allowing the clay to kind of move up to the top edge of the sleeve and as well as kind of using my fingers to press it down into the sleeve itself now because this is a 3d printed filament it already has grooves um, so I decided not to sand my base but if you wanted to give your base something extra to stick to you can go ahead and sand that down but I did not have any problems with my clay sticking to it at all so I just went straight in now once I have my clay where I want it and I'm happy with how it's kind of sitting down, I'm just going in with my finger and I did spritz it with a little bit of water just to kind of smooth out the base as best as I can. Now, I already knew that I was going to have to go in and sand this to get it a lot smoother once it dried, um, but I'm just trying to get it as smooth as I can right now just so that I don't have to go in with a lot of sanding. So once I got my kind of like mushroom cap base down, down, I went in with another piece of clay and I rolled it out like you know just like a snake roll I don't know what you call it but I just rolled it out and I'm gonna try to get it wide enough so that I can put that around the bottom part of where my clay is now this is gonna kind of be the area that's poking out um, and you know the like the edge of my mushroom basically so i'm just trying to see how much i need i did need to go in with another piece so i went i just kind of like visualize where i'm going to be putting it down and then i'm going to go ahead and get another piece of clay and roll that out as well so that i can kind of just put everything down so here i am putting the extra piece of clay and pushing it into that already existing clay that i put on the you know the base of my sphere and as you can see i rolled that clay kind of above where the clay was already sitting because i wanted there to be enough space for me to put the eyes and i am using a like picture of a mushroom as inspiration so that i know like what i want my mushroom to look like so if you have an idea of what you want to create it really does help by like putting out a picture and seeing like how you're going to sculpt you know your creation so i did have a picture of a toad on my computer and i was just kind of like looking at the picture and going back and forth between you know with my tools and how i wanted like the face to peek through and all that stuff <laughs> i'm trying to explain it as best as i can um but yeah you know like this is just me making my first 3d tumbler so a lot of it was kind of just winging it and i did feel like i went with a pretty simple um design because i just wanted to start with something basic before throwing myself into something um too crazy for my first one i think i did a really good job um but if you're a 3d sculptor and you're watching this and you have any tips let me know um i wanted to you know just kind of uh, do something fun and I don't know it was just a lot of fun creating this and sculpting and I did a lot of this in the middle of the night 
after everybody went to sleep and I just have to say that it was so like relaxing be a being able to work on something new and kind of like sculpt with my hands it was so much fun and I can't wait to make more so uh, so here I am I'm just like kind of sculpting where the face is gonna be I wanted that partial portion of my cup to be a little bit higher as you can see I'm trying to like form you know like little eyebrows I guess of where the eyes would be peeking out and then the back part of my mushroom is a little bit lower so you see where the face is gonna go and then the back of the mushroom and yeah pretty much after I'm happy with how it's laid out and sculpted I just let it sit for 48 hours um I googled how long it would take for uh, air dry clay to set up and it said anywhere between 24 to 72 hours depending on like how thick your clay is so I let it sit for 48 hours and I kept checking it to see you know how solid it sounded and all that stuff and after 48 hours it looked pretty good so I'm just kind of you know going through looking around before I really let it sit but here we are 48 hours later and as you can see it is white now and um, if you noticed before while it was wet it was gray and this air dries white which I really really love because it gives us a nice base for our painting so once my clay was nice and dry I went in with the extra fine sanding paper and I really really went into town trying to sand this down and smooth it out as best as I can um, now I tried to get it as smooth as possible but I knew that I was going to go over this with glitter anyway so while I did go in with a lot of sanding to get it as smooth as I possibly could um, I wasn't too worried about any areas that maybe weren't perfect because I was going to be I know that I was going to be painting over this and glittering over this so any imperfections that may be on the clay right now that you can see are eventually going to be covered. So once I was happy with how smooth it was, I went in, I cleaned it off, dusted it off, and we're going to go in with some Mod Podge to seal this clay in before I go in with my paint. I'm just taking a smooth paintbrush. The one I'm using is from CCDIY. You can use any smooth bristle paintbrush to do this. And I'm just taking my Mod Podge and I'm spreading it around evenly all over the base of the cup where I put my clay as well as underneath where the 3D printed sleeve was still peeking through. I went ahead and I'm going to let that dry for 24 hours and then I'm going to come back and we're going to paint this with acrylic paint. So the paints I'm using for this project are from Folk Art. I got a whole entire kit from Walmart and I actually love these paints. I'm starting with the bottom portion of my mushroom, which is the face. And so I'm going in with the color Warm Buff. Actually, this one is Apple Barrel. So I'm going in with Apple Barrel Warm Buff for the face. And I'm going to do two good coats of this. And I'm going to go in with the top part of my mushroom and this is the Folk Art Lipstick Red and this is a matte finish acrylic paint. I'm going to go in with my smooth paintbrush and I'm going to coat the entire surface of my mushroom, the top portion of my mushroom, in this red. I thought it was the perfect red for the mushroom cap because it matched perfectly with the inspiration I had from the toad from Mario Bros. So for all of my paint, I went in with two coats, so two coats of that warm buff and two coats of the lipstick red. And now I'm going to start tracing out my circles. So if you look at the picture of Toad, you're going to see that he has um, like white circles on the mushroom cap. So I'm going in with a pencil and I'm just outlining where I want my white circles to be. And of course, I'm looking at the picture to kind of be as accurate as possible. So I'm going to just go ahead and trace that with my pencil um, so that I know where I'm going to go when it comes time to laying down my white paint. Now the white paint is also Folk Art brand and the shade is called Winter White. It is also a matte finish. Going in with a thin paintbrush and I'm just carefully outlining those pencil marks that I laid down as carefully as I can just to kind of, you know, be have a perfect circle, as perfect as I can get it. Now, obviously, it's not a perfect, perfect circle because it's hand painted, but I think I did 
the best that I could and I liked how it, liked how it came out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and outline, then I'm going to fill that in. And again, I'm going to be going in with two coats. So as I lay down each circle and I fill it in with the first coat, I'm going to go back in with a second coat of paint. This is where we're at after I've painted the last circle on my mushroom. I can see it's really pulling everything in together and I'm really, really happy with how it's turning out. So after I went in with my coats of paint and I'm happy with how vibrant they look, I'm going to go in and start applying my Mod Podge so that I can apply my glitter. Now, because Mod Podge dries so fast, I'm going to go in section at a time and I'm going to just be really careful to outline those white areas. So I'm going to go in with my flat paintbrush and I'm going to apply that Mod Podge again section at a time and the glitter i'm using is called lady in red and i'm going to be using that and sprinkling that all over the red portion of my cup so here i am just sprinkling on that glitter and i'm going to be doing this until the entire tumbler is coated in that red glitter because i've already pre-painted my base i'm only going to have to go in with one coat of this red glitter for the time purpose of this video i'm just going to fast forward through me glittering this red part I was done with the red part of my cup I went in with Mod Podge and now I'm using Glitz and Glam as the bottom part where the face is going to be of my mushroom. This is one of my favorite glitters ever and we need to get it back in, in stock ASAP. <laughs> if you're looking for it keep an eye on my website because we will be doing a big restock. There's a lot of glitters that are not in stock right now so my apologies but we're working on it. Um, so once I go ahead and apply the uh, Glitz and Glam under the bottom now I'm working on my circles my spots and i'm going in with mod podge again with an angled paintbrush and i'm going to be using um sheen this time for the white areas of my mushroom and sheen is a pearlescent white and it's also really really pretty and i just went in with that very carefully and i'm going to sprinkle it all around okay so i'm quickly fast forwarding through this part but once i'm done glittering it fully i did take it outside after it was dried 100 percent and seal it with my spray sealer now i do want to mention to you guys that i only went in with one coat of that spray sealant before adding my resin so um unfortunately i did get a little bit of movement from that red glitter onto my white which was a little bit disappointing but it's a personal cup and i'm still really happy with how it turned out however if this is something that bothers you then I do recommend with you going in with at least two to three coats of that spray sealant to avoid um, the movement of that glitter now I'm going in with my fast set resin I've whipped up 30 mls and I'm applying that wet resin to the white part of my cup first again I was trying to prevent any of that red glitter from going onto my white uh, glitter but it happened anyway and you know no big deal but it happened once I'm done applying that resin to the white part of my cup, I'm going to just go ahead and take that and cover the rest of the red area. And then I'm going to just evenly spread it around. Now I am working with facet resin. So if you're working with facet resin, you do have to work a little bit quicker than normally. Um, but once you've applied the resin all around, just put it on your spinner, let it spin for about 30 minutes to an hour. Then you can stop your turner and just let it set up now i'm gonna go in with two coats of resin on top of my mushroom so that i can get it smooth enough to where i can apply um my vinyl decal in a minute we'll get there and show you but i just wanted to show you all how i applied my resin again this is the first set so once i've resined all around the top portion of my mushroom i'm gonna go in with my resin from the bottom part of the cup so i'm taking a good piece of that resin and i'm going to just spread it evenly with my finger all around and i'm going to let it flow down so that we can get that resin underneath those areas of the mushroom like i really really want it to get it into those nooks and crannies so we can get the cup as smooth as possible 
So once I'm done applying my resin, I put it on the spinner and here you can see it now. I'm going to go ahead and hit that with my torch just to pop any bubbles. You want to do this very lightly because with fast set resin, it does start to heat up and cure quickly and you don't want to burn your resin. So I'm going to just pop those bubbles real quick and let it spin for about an hour. After my second coat of resin has cured, I'm going to take that off the turner and I'm going to start cleaning off the inside of the sleeve. Any excess resin or excess glitter that may be there, I'm going to pull it away and clean the inside of my sleeve. I'm going to take a tissue paper with 91% alcohol and I'm going to wipe the inside of my cup and get any excess pieces that might be still on the inside of my sleeve. Now it's time to apply the eyes and I created the eyes in Cricut Design Space. I just used my Google image as inspiration. I added the oval shapes to my Cricut Design Space and I just resized them and manipulated them to fit how I wanted them to look. Now I was a little bit anal about the position of my eyes so you can see that I'm like repositioning it a few times before I was happy with how they were placed. Just really wanted them to be as even as possible. Um, I guess I was being really anal about that and once I have my the black part of my eyes down I'm going to go ahead and apply the white portion of the eye again I did them the same exact way just added a shape of the oval to my Cricut design space and resized them to fit so I left the tumbler for last but now that the mushroom is almost done I went ahead and decided to start prepping my cup I went in with the cherry red and spray painted it and now I'm just going to apply resin all over the base of my cup of course after it is completely dried. I did add just a little bit of silver moon dust to my resin just to give it a little bit of sparkle however not much of this cup is going to be showing at all I think barely anything is peeking out at the top but just in case anything was showing I just wanted to add a little bit of sparkle so I went ahead and did that and I'm coating the entire tumbler around with a very thin coat of resin and I'm also taking a little bit of that resin and I'm coating the entire interior of my sleeve. I just wanted to make sure that everything was covered on the inside as well as the outside of the cup so that we didn't have any areas of space that could create, I don't know, like any space of air or anything like that. So I just felt it would be a little bit better if I just coated the inside of the sleeve as well. So I went ahead and you want to leave your cup on a flat surface um, and your sleeve on a flat surface and you want to let that cure standing up. I wouldn't let it cure on the spinner just in case there was any movement of the cup inside. You want everything to be nice and flat. So once I let that cure, I put it on the turner and I'm applying my second to last coat of resin now you can see that the cup is cured inside of my sleeve you can see just a little bit of it poking out there and i've whipped up 20 mls of facet resin and i'm going to just evenly smooth that around the entire base of my cup the top portion as well as the bottom portion that has the vinyl decal now so i'm going to just spread that all around we're going to let that cure and i am going to go in with the second coat as well I just want to mention that this entire cup was made solely with CCDIY facet resin um, except for the final coat. The final coat is regular artist resin. However, CCDIY has just launched a brand new facet turbo that can be used as a final layer. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Your girl already pre-ordered it and I can't wait to test that out and let you guys know what I think of it. So stay tuned for that upcoming video once my resin comes in. I just wanted to put that little plug in there because you guys know how much I love my facet resin. One of the downsides of facet resin was that you could not use it as your final layer so i'm really excited for it but i did just want to let you know that for this video my final layer was ccdiy artist resin but the rest of the cup was with facet all right anyways i wanted to show you guys this little trick that i was doing because i wanted to really make sure that that seal was like sealed in with resin 100%. So even though I did put resin all over the cup as well as inside of my sleeve, I just wanted to make sure that that little, there's like a little crevice where the tumbler and the sleeve meet. I just wanted to make sure that that was nice and sealed in. So I went in with a popsicle stick and I just made sure to apply resin right in that area so we don't have any spaces in between the sleeve or the cup. 
Now, once your tumbler is cured, you can go ahead and pull it off the turner and you're going to want to clean off that rim. Don't forget to clean off your rims. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife just to clean off any resin that may have cured on the rim. I'm going to take a light sanding block just to sand and smooth out the rim. And then I'm also going to go in with 91% alcohol just to disinfect and clean off any like debris or anything that may be inside the cup. Once that's done, you can add your lid and we are done, you guys. I love how it turned out. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. What did you think about my first 3D tumbler? Did I do a good job? You did amazing. I can't wait to make more. Honestly, this is giving me the confidence that I think I needed to be able to do something so out of the box for me. And I'm excited to make more of these. So if you guys wanna see more 3D tumblers from me, leave a comment down below and let me know what you wanna see next. I'm excited to get sculpting again and I can't wait. So yeah, hope you liked this video. Give it a big thumbs up if you did. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you subscribe so you don't miss out any of my future videos. All of my videos drop on Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. So stay tuned and until next time, I'll see you later. Peace.